Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I am happy to be reviewing the Micro Drone 3.0 from Extreme Flyers. Now, if you didn't see my last video where I explained the concept of Micro Drone 3.0 and also reviewed the Micro Drone 2.0, then you might not be aware that Micro Drone 3.0 is an extremely successful crowdfunding project. To date, it has been funded $3.2 million, making it over 3,000% funded. That's pretty impressive, and ever since Vernon, who is the brain behind this project, contacted me and made me aware of it, I have been a fan of the idea. Despite it being fully funded, you can still go and sign up for a Microdrone 3.0 on the Indiegogo website. I will link it below. It's $175, which is at a discounted price compared to buying it from a retail store. So, if you are interested in it, then definitely sign up for that. This project caught many people's attention due to the fact that it offers a micro gimbal. This gimbal isn't available at the moment though, but you can reserve one for an extra $50. The gimbal is still in the testing phase, but I believe it will use two brush motors along with some digital stabilization to give it very stable footage. I hope to be getting one of those when it comes out. Also to be made available is an upgraded 1080p camera, as well as an analog 5.8GHz camera, and a range extender to boost the current video signal. This was Vernon's idea all along to have the magnetic connections, so parts can be added and upgraded in the future with easy connectivity. This is what you are buying into with the micro drone. At present, the base model Micro Drone 3.0 is aimed at beginners, which will give you around a 25 to 50 meter video range. Their slogan is a drone for everyone, which is what these add ons will provide in the future. Until then, the base model is released and has started to be shipped to its backers. I now have the Micro Drone 3.0, so let's go and take a look at it. It comes in this box, and if you are a backer, then you will get a thank you note. You then get three boxes. The big box contains the drone, another box contains the phone holder, and the last box contains the camera. The separate boxes again are there so that different options can be purchased in the future. You also get these Google Cardboard goggles, because with this one, the phone app splits into two, so we have the FPV goggle option as well. You also get a strap for the goggles, and if you ordered any spare batteries as part of your reward, those should be in the box also. You also get some Love Heart candy. I'm sure that won't be the case in the retail box, however. So, let's open the big box and see what's inside. We are presented with the drone on the top. Already, I'm looking at the props here, and I can see that they are the parrot-style rolling spider props. This is good news, as part of my micro prop tests showed these as the most powerful. They are also premium props, around 5 GBP for a set. The quad is attached to this cardboard. You can just poke the motor through, which releases it. I hate it when manufacturers tie the quad to the top of the box, and you have to play a very annoying game to get it out. In worst cases, even damaging the product, getting the delicate parts out. So a big thumbs up there. Underneath the quad, we have prop guards, which are good for beginners, and also those wanting to fly indoors. I like how they are in half pieces, so that they don't take up too much space in the box. We have a spare set of parrot style props too, again, so that's another 5 GBPs worth of props. We also have some reversible props, which is interesting. This quad is 3D capable, but of course you need symmetrical props for that. 3D is a nice feature, but as mentioned in my previous videos, the props lose efficiency in general to enable them to give the same thrust in both directions. So, this is really nice that we have been given the option of the highly powered and efficient parrot props, as well as the reversible ones when you want to play around. As well as that, we have the U-Wrench, which I'm always a fan of. The amount of motors I have destroyed trying to get props off with my hands is not worth thinking about, so another thumbs up for that. We have the charger, which comes with this USB mini B cable, so you can plug that into your laptop to charge. We also have the battery with the magnetic connectors. 
The magnetic connectors are for the camera and accessories. The battery slots into the quadcopter the other side. The battery is 550 milliamp. It says on the battery that it's 3.7 volts and that it's a lithium ion battery. This is different to a LiPo battery for anyone considering to modify it in any way. I'm sure that we could mod the quad to fit a normal LiPo battery, but we will be losing that magnetic design for the camera, which is the entire point of this aircraft. I would strongly advise to buy a spare battery or two when you order. Underneath that we have the 2.4 GHz controller. It takes four AA batteries which are not included. I would suggest rechargeables to be used here, but as we don't have a backlit LCD or an FPV screen to power, non-rechargeable batteries will give you a fairly long life. The transmitter comes in mode 2 or mode 4 configuration, but just like the Microdrone 2.0, I have converted this into mode 1. If you would like to learn how to do that, then check out the transmitter mods playlist. There is a video in there that shows you how to convert any toy grade transmitter to any mode that you desire. So the mode 2 and mode 4 switch on mine is now mode 1 and mode 3. Let's take a look at the other functions. The same as on the Microdrone 2.0, we have the standard mode and the stunt mode switch. This is basically your flip switch, however it's incorporated slightly differently than other quadcopters. In stunt mode, the quad will fly normally and self-level, but when you reach the maximum stick position on either the pitch or roll axis, the aircraft will perform a flip in that direction. It will continue to do this until you switch it back to standard mode. We have this function button, which if you press once, the video will start recording, but take note of this. In order to use this feature, you will have to provide your own micro SD card to the camera, and also attach the wire that is provided in the camera box to the quadcopter. I will talk about that more when we open the camera in a minute. To stop the video recording via the transmitter, we short press the function key again. Moving on and we have the smart orientation key. We know this function as headless mode in the RC hobby. It's not a mode I recommend for beginners as you need to correct for changes in orientation to become a good flyer. It is however fun to mess around with as an experienced flyer. The return button is one key return. Again, it's not a function that tends to work well on these micro quadcopters. The way that it works is it manipulates the headless mode to pitch backwards automatically to simulate the quadcopter returning back to you, but I have not had much success with this function. Moving on to the inverted switch, a single switch of this will invert the quad and back again will right itself. It auto flips the controls so from a flying perspective the quad flies the same regardless of it being inverted or not. I would prefer the option for a full 3D mode, but so far this has only been implemented into the Nano QX quadcopter, and I suppose from a manufacturing point of view it will cause a lot more crashes and therefore returns, so I can see why it's not offered in some respects, but for us honest folks I'd love to see a full collective pitch inverted mode on these micro quadcopters, maybe one day who knows. Of course we have all the usual trim buttons for fine tuning, and lastly we have the rate mode switch which is labelled slow, fast and insane. Those modes speak for themselves really, but it's basically the amount of throw we are given on each axis. In all of these modes the quad still self levels. So next onto the camera, it is 720p and uses these magnets to connect to the battery. It can face forwards or backwards. It uses Wi-Fi for the FPV transmission, so I will test that later to see the type of FPV experience that provides. Digital transmissions always have an amount of delay in them, but if you checked out my FPV on an iPhone video, which used a similar system to this, the lag was manageable, so I will have to check out whether it is the same via this system. There was also a noticeable lag on Android compared to iOS, so I will check that out also. Here is the cable that I mentioned before. This cable transfers the PWM value from the receiver to the camera. It's something that is not needed if you only intend to record via the phone. 
What I find interesting though is that without that cable installed, the camera module is standalone. You can take this camera off and connect it to the battery, and you have a mini wireless camera, which is pretty neat. It's also making me think that as we can control the aircraft solely from the phone rather than the transmitter, either the phone talks to the quad and camera module at the same time, or the camera module talks to the drone and allows control of it. Either way, it's pretty clever. Lastly in the box we have the phone holder which nicely slides into the back of the transmitter. I know I'm going to be asked what size phone is supported. I'm using a 5 inch Nexus 5 here. You can use up to a 6 inch phone. Of course the missing piece of the puzzle is the phone. You can have fun with this quadcopter without a phone and still record video, but you need a phone to do FPV. I'm glad to see that there is an iOS and Android app. I have both of those phones to test. I'm going to start with the Android phone as it allows me to screen record. Search for Micro Drone in the Play Store and download the app. You will want to connect the battery to the quad and also the camera and wait for around 20 seconds. Then move over to your phone's Wi-Fi settings and change the hotspot to MicroDrone 3.0. As we are using the phone's Wi-Fi here, we won't be able to use the phone's internet at the same time. Next, open the app. It's a really nice app, folks. We have this welcome screen here with a nice video background of the puppies in London. I really like that. We are presented with three options, which are learn, fly, and review. The learn button is really easy and transparent to get you started. It's a series of videos by the man himself, Vernon, explaining how to use all of the functions in a very quick manner and will get you started in no time. If you can't figure it out from that, well, you could always watch this video that I'm doing here, it's a bit longer. The review button is where your videos and photos are recorded and saved onto the phone. These aren't the videos from the SD card, they're just recorded from the phone. Fly is the main screen we are interested in. Open it and it should connect to the quad and we should see what the quad is viewing through its camera. We have sticks on the screen. This is because we can control the quad directly from the screen. It's a great feature but not where my skills lie so I will be mostly flying with the controller. You can see that you don't directly have to have your thumbs placed in the perfect position on the screen either. This allows you to look away from the screen and generally look at what the quadcopter is doing, which I like. We also have the trims on the screen as well, but we can turn those off. I will show you that a bit later. There's a button for video and a button for photos. We have a settings button up top, which opens up another menu. We have lots of cool settings. Starting at the top, we have accelerometer. At first, I thought this was going to turn on and off the accelerometer on the quad, giving a full acro mode. It doesn't do that, unfortunately, but it does do something just as cool. You can use the accelerometer on your phone to control the quadcopter. I will have to give that a go. Next is Smart Orientation, which speaks for itself. It turns headless mode on and off. We can change between mode 2 and mode 4. This is the placement of the sticks on the phone and not the transmitter. I would love the option for mode 1 and mode 3 as well, but that's most likely just me and the Australians who fly those modes. Inertia is the rate mode, but how much it is affected via the phone, which is on this slider. Trim bar gets rid of the trim settings on the main flying page. Audio source is greyed out, no doubt that's a future option. Control, we can switch between the phone or transmitter, so you can't control both at the same time, it's either one or the other. We have a reset button which resets all the default settings. Back to the main menu, and you are probably thinking, how does this work with the goggles that are included? Well, if you put the phone into the goggles like this, you aren't going to get a very good image. That's because these Google-style goggles have lenses in that has the effect of crossing your eyes. So we need to split the phone screen into two images to get a single 3D image in the goggle. We do that by selecting this box up the top and then selecting the glasses icon. You will then get two images and you are ready to place them into the goggles. Of course you need to make the goggles up and that's pretty self-explanatory as shown. 
The cardboard goggles can house up to a 6 inch phone, however you can buy aftermarket goggles for bigger phones. One thing I'm not too keen on is these icons that are left on the screen in goggle mode. As the icons are only on one side of the screen, they will cause an artifact on the other side of the screen. Perhaps there could be an option in the settings to turn this off in goggle mode to give us a clearer image. We also have the option to click full view which gets rid of all the icons on the screen that we don't need so that that gives us a bigger picture. Vernon and his team have absolutely nailed these goggles. On my 5 inch Nexus phone the field of view is massive. It's also incredibly clear, smashing the fat shark view out of the ballpark. Those icons I mentioned earlier do not interfere with the view too much either, but I would still like to see the option of removing everything from the on-screen display. The wide field of view of the goggles capture the main picture perfectly. This is going to deviate depending on your phone's screen size. The view through these cardboard goggles, however, is much bigger than my aftermarket VR goggles. They have been specifically designed for the micro drone and they have done a really good job. You can also wear glasses with these goggles quite comfortably. How is it that Fat Shark and all the other goggle manufacturers have not been able to figure that out? But we have some cardboard goggles here that have. It is possible to FPV with these goggles, but there is a small amount of latency between the image and the camera. This is expected from digital FPV, and I suggest having a big, wide open space to try it, and you'll get a good experience out of it. Just make sure that you have a spotter in case you go out of range. As mentioned before, without the range extender that's not currently available, you will get a 25 to 50 meter range from the video. The camera does not have a wide angle lens on it, so I would not recommend FPV indoors with these goggles. Before I move on to the flight test, I want to mention a couple of important things. In order to get any use out of the headless mode, you need to calibrate the compass before takeoff. You do this by holding the sticks to the bottom right for 5 seconds. Another thing I noticed about this frame is that it is made of a light metal, which I have not seen before a micro quad. This seems to be a very strong material. An observation I made of these parrot style props is that in the past they are not made to an accurate tolerance. With my own parrot props I experienced a lot of vibrations causing jallo on the video footage. I looked at the underneath of these props provided with the micro drone and I can see that on one pair there seems to be some balancing material on the underside. I have no idea what jig they use to balance them up, but it's good to see. If you are still experiencing Jalo with the micro drone, then I suggest either buying a few pairs of the rolling spider props or try out other props such as the Hubson X4 props. Lastly, I want to address the frames per second issue that other reviewers and backers have complained about. To do that, let's get a flight in. To get the best experience for FPV in daylight, you will want to turn your phone's brightness up to full. The weather has been absolutely terrible here. For a long time, we have not had winds under 20 miles an hour. One day, it was blowing a gale and the only aircraft I could fly was the micro drone. It has that insane mode to ensure that I can pitch the angle of the quadcopter against the wind and still achieve forward motion. The video quality in such winds, however, is to be desired due to the amount of shake that the quadcopter is experiencing in the wind, but you can get the idea. I found that with the drone connected to the phone app, recording via the app or the function key on the transmitter resulted in the video on the SD card being recorded at 20 frames per second. My opinion of this is that I can't really see it as a problem. Others mentioned that it was jerky, but I don't really find that. If you are dead set on getting 25 frames per second out of the micro drone, there is something that you can do. Make sure that the included cable in the camera box is connected to the drone as shown earlier. You can then connect the battery and camera up to the quad, but don't connect it via the phone app. 
Then when you press record by the function button on the transmitter, you will get a 720p video recorded in 25 frames per second saved to your SD card. It is a bit of a workaround, but it is possible. However, you are limited to flying the quadcopter line of sight to get that result. What I prefer to do is not attach an SD card to the camera at all. Instead, if you press record via the phone app, a 640p video in 23 frames per second is recorded directly to the phone. This is perfect for me as I'm using the micro drone for casual flying and video recording. The quality recorded to the phone is good enough for me compared to the aggro that you have to go through to get 720p by installing the cable and flying line of sight to get that 25 frames per second. If you choose to install that cable and put an SD card into the camera and start video recording via the phone app, then a 720p in 20 frames per second video will be saved to the SD card as well as a 640p video to your phone but that will then record at 20 frames per second I guess that is due to the extra load on everything so the best option for me is to record just via the phone app at 640p and 23 frames per second and I can monitor what I have recorded back on the phone directly after the flight Due to my tests on the Wi-Fi Avin app, I was expecting the Android app to have more of a latency than the iPhone app. This wasn't the case, they are both exactly the same, which is nice and consistent. One thing I did struggle with again though is accessing the files on the iPhone that the micro drone app saves. Whereas on Android it creates a micro drone 3.0 specific folder and saves the photos and videos in there for easy access through USB to a computer. Let's talk a bit more about the flight modes. I want to address the inverted flying. The quadcopter knows when the camera is attached. It therefore disables the inverted feature because the symmetrical props don't produce enough thrust to lift the quad inverted when the camera is attached. This is fine by me but be aware that you can only play with the inverted feature when the camera is not attached. You can however still do 360 degree flips with the camera still attached. I would say that the flight modes slow, fast and insane are accurate when it comes to the pitch and roll axis. I would say that the yaw throw is a medium rate. When you select the inverted switch, the quadcopter will gain a fair amount of height before it flips over. So if flying indoors, give yourself plenty of room. You are not in control of which direction the quadcopter flips inverted either. From the right way up it flips forward to go inverted and backwards to right itself so again make sure that you give yourself plenty of room for that maneuver. Be careful not to drop the throttle at any point while it's flipping inverted as zero throttle will cause the aircraft to reverse its propellers again and you could end up flying directly into the ground. I'm just going to give a quick demo controlling the quadcopter via the phone app. It works really good on Android. You don't have to look where your thumbs are at all. However, the range is only good for a few meters. And with the iPhone, I found the connection dropping out quite often and the quad would fall out of the sky. So it's best to stick to the provided controller in my opinion. I was surprised how well I could control the quadcopter via the phone in such a small space though, especially with me being a mode 1 flyer and the phone being locked in to mode 2 or mode 4. From an FPV perspective, this Wi-Fi version of the quad is best flown line of sight with the video feed used as a reference, similar to how you would fly a DJI Phantom with their DJI app. The FPV feed can stutter as the phone is requiring a lot of processing power to produce the image. This will vary between different phones as there will be a variety of different processing power and RAM available. My phones being the 2013 Nexus 5 and the iPhone 5 which are quite old now. The field of view is quite narrow but not enough to spoil the captured video. I could go in there and see if I could add a wide angle lens to it but I don't want to mess it up or mess around with it. I'm not too interested in that as I say I'm using it to fly line of sight mostly to capture nice video using the phone as a reference. 
I think a few people will ask me if they can use fat shark goggles with this and I guess you can if you use the HDMI out on your phone to the goggles but the cardboard goggles Vernon has provided have a much better field of view. I would expect the 5.8 GHz FPV module that Vernon is developing to be aimed more at the experienced FPV flyer and would more be suited for aftermarket FPV goggles. I find the video quality to be ample, whether using the 720p recorded footage on the SD card or the 640p footage recorded to the phone. The video records the SD card at 4 megabits per second, which could be a little bit higher, but definitely gives a decent result. I look forward to seeing what their 1080p camera can bring to the table later on in the project's development. My conclusions are that I totally love this thing. For a small price, you are getting a taste of the full flavor of quadcopters in the RC hobby. Your hardcore mini quad racers are probably not going to like this product. We are not using 600 TV line cameras here, so it's never going to please them. We have a drone that with the addition of your phone can give you an immersive FPV experience via the included goggles. Or the experience of an FPV monitor again via your phone and the included phone holder. Everyone has either an Android phone or an iPhone and we can put them to good use here without having to buy an FPV monitor or goggles. It has powerful brush motors with the best prop combination as well for thrust. 3D capable flight modes as well as flips and insane rate modes. With the magnetic connectivity and future snap-on accessories, it's definitely a unique product. Did I mention that all of that comes with a 6 minute flight time as well, even more if you don't plan on using the camera? There is also a very accurate low voltage warning as well. Different to other quads again, the low voltage warning kicks in via the onboard LEDs when the voltage gets too low. But if that was the result of you punching the throttle too much, then the low voltage warning will turn off and you can carry on flying. Something many RTF micro quads are missing in my opinion. So there you go, that is my review of the Micro Drone 3.0. I hope you found the video useful. Thanks to Vernon for the support and thanks so much for watching this video. Please continue to subscribe. Cheers.